Now let me ask you one quick question. Are you using full site editing with WordPress? If you are, let me know in the comment section down below. If you're not, also let me know and tell me why you're not using it. Today, we're going to take a look at how we start working with full site editing. Oh, specifically, we're going to be using the free Ollie theme. Now, I covered the Ollie theme last week in its own dedicated little video. Check that out because I think you might like what it offers. Today, we're going to be taking a look at how it works with full site editing. And this should be pretty much the same for any WordPress full site editing theme. And that's a key thing. You do need a full site editing based theme to get access to how this all works. Okay, so the Ollie theme is what we're going to use. Let's take a quick look at what we're starting off with with a basic vanilla install of Ollie. You can see you've got a home page, your header, your footer, some content, all the things you'd expect to see. And this is default whenever you install Ollie. So let me show you first of all how you access the full site editing options and how we can start to customize this theme to make it truly our own. Now to access your theme and your full site editing and all the options we have coming into the dashboard and over to appearance. Now you'll see things look a little different here to what you used to. You still have themes, but we no longer have customized and any of those kinds of options. That's because we're using a full site editing based theme. If we go into themes, that'll just take us over so we can see any or all of the themes we have installed. And if we open up the editor, this is where we now switch into full site editing mode. And this, I think, is where one of the first kind of levels of confusion is brought into working with full site editing. It now looks like you're in a completely different tool. This no longer looks like the normal WordPress. I think this is one of those areas that WordPress really need to address to have cohesion between full site editing and all the options it brings, Gutenberg and the normal dashboard of WordPress. It's just a little bit all over the shop and messy. Coming over to the left hand side one more time, you'll see we've got two different sections, your templates and your template parts. Opening up templates, this is where you'll find your posts, your pages, your 404, those types of templates, kind of whole page templates. If we come back out into template parts, you'll find there's three different templates inside you currently, your footer, your header and your post loop. These are kind of global template parts. For example, if we come into the header section, you see, this is where we've got our header, what we see on every single page of our site. And to get into start editing this, all we need to do is come over and choose the little edit icon. And now we get the more familiar options for Gutenberg on the right hand side. You can see this is telling us what template we're currently looking at. And if we switch to block, you will see currently nothing is inside you because we have no blocks selected. We can make our lives easier by opening up the list view and inside here you can see all of the different block based template parts. So for example, if we open this up, you can see we've got a group for the top section, this purple block. We've got a row inside there and inside that row, we've got a paragraph to the left hand side and we've got our button or buttons to the right hand side. If we click on the next group, this will show us these dot of darker section. Again, expanding this out, we've got our rows, we've got our site title on the left hand side and our navigation on the right hand side, which you can open that up. You'll also notice when we select anything, for example, the page list for our navigation or the navigation block itself, over on the right hand side, now we'll see all the options associated with that specific block. You can see we've got our list view, and this will show us in this example all the different kind of pages in our navigation. We've got the cog icon, which is for our settings. This allows us to control the justification, the orientation. So this is using Flexbox, so we can basically work with vertical and horizontal. So we can stack things in columns or rows like we would see in Flexbox. And you can allow us to sort of wrap to multiple lines and we've got different display options and all different kinds of options. Under advanced, if we expand this out, you can see we've got additional options inside here. Again, these are specific in a lot of cases to whatever block you've got selected. And again, if we come over to the very final one, this is where we can access our styles. And this is where we can kind of customize more aspects of our design. So our text, our background, submenu overlay colors and so on, including things like the sizing for our typography. If we click on the little sort of custom size options, we can set a pixel value inside you. Come back out of there, you can see we can choose from basic sort of global settings for things like small, extra small and so on. Everything is currently based on REMS with this particular theme, which is pretty cool to see. If you click on the little sort of three dots to give us even more options, you can see we can choose additional options. We can pull up like font family, appearance, line height, letter spacing, decoration and so on. And when we enable those, you'll see now they all become available inside the editing panel on the right hand side. So we can customize this how we see fit. 
want to change the font, we can change that inside here. So we could change this to monospace, for example, change it to inter, or we can put it back to the default font that's being used globally. So you've got controls over all aspects. Now, again, this is one of those areas that having these options turned off, while I understand they do make life a little easier because the whole interface looks a little bit more streamlined, not everybody's going to know that by clicking on the options here, we can go ahead and access all these additional options that you're probably going to need when you want to set up styling. Same thing kind of comes in. If we come into row, for example, you can see we can choose the options for our orientation and justification. And again, we've got our styles and colors. And again, you've got options to expand this out. And you'll see this isn't being applied across everything. We've got to go back in and access and enable all these options if you want to use them which is kind of annoying in this example. If anybody knows there's an easier way to kind of globally change this for every single panel inside Gutenberg, please do let me know in the comment section below because I kind of find this really, really kind of slow, tedious, and kind of unnecessary in a lot of cases. But you can customize all the aspects. So let's, for example, let's completely remove this design aspects we have here. Let's go ahead and delete these completely. We'll just choose to remove those blocks. And now we have nothing inside here. So we could go into multiple different ways of doing this. We could go in and we could use our blocks options to create what we want using columns and rows and all those kinds of good things to get total control over every aspect. Or because we're using the Ollie theme, we can come into their patterns. We can come into, for example, the header section, and we now have a selection of pre-built, great-looking header blocks that we can use and insert directly into this template, and then we can customize them as we see fit. For this example, let's keep it a really simple layout. Let's go for this header dark with buttons. There we go. We've now added that into our design. And again, like I say, we've got full control over this, so we can easily come in and change out any options we want. We want to get rid of buttons. We can get rid of those. Open our list view up. Let's say we want to get rid of this first button, so we'll remove that. We've now customized this. We might want to change the text that's actually inside here. If we don't want to use the site title, we can change it for something completely different. So we can change it to text. We'll leave it as it is for now. But all the options are available inside here. You can set your headings one through six, your paragraph, your alignment. You can open it in a new tab, which is not recommended for accessibility. But once we set everything up the way we want, we click on save. That's now committed that. So that's the first kind of part of working with it. We can work with these template parts and we can build out what we want inside them. Now, let's say, for example, we want to change the color scheme that's used throughout our design. We could, if we wanted to, come into the button and adjust aspects of that inside here. And you can see we can change the kind of style of this to outline secondary. We can adjust the color. Again, you've got the typography settings. We've got kind of global options for padding and margins and so on. So we can just use these options to customize this as we see fit using these kind of arbitrary values. Or we can come into the option to set this up on a unique value, whatever we want to put in there. And we can also unlink the size to go ahead and adjust the padding and the margins and set things up on an individual side basis, top, bottom, left, right. You kind of get the picture. What we can also do is come up to the option for styles in the top corner, which is now globally setting styles. Imagine this like a kind of style sheet. Currently, we've got this kind of purple styling going on. But what we can do is we can browse the styles and any styles that are part of the theme or styles we may create, we can now access those inside you and globally change things. So for example, we may want to go with this kind of teal look. And you can see now that changes the button and anywhere inside our overall design, any of the sort of parts of our design that use that kind of global color, will update accordingly. So we can again come back out of this. It now switches back over. And we can, if we want to, customize things. So come to the typography, you can see we've got text, links, headings, and buttons. We can customize those. For example, we open our button up. You can see we can change anything we want inside here. Might want to change the appearance. So we might want to say we want to make this light, for example. You can see that change the typography, make it bold so it stands out a bit more, your line height, your size, all those kinds of good things. Come back out of there and back out one more time and you can come into your colors and you can adjust your colors. So you can see we've got these colors for various different parts of our design, the background text and so on. We can open up the color palette and if we want to, we can change this to our own color scheme. So while we've got this teal as the kind of primary color, we can just as easily select that from there and change this to anything that we want. We might want to make this a kind of purpley kind of color. Well, you can see that updates are now anywhere in our design. When we change this, we'll update accordingly. We won't worry about that. We'll leave that as it is. 
Again, come back out. If you want to add custom colors, you can add custom colors inside you and you can assign them any name that you want and all those kinds of good things. Want to apply gradients? You can apply gradients as well. And again, you can come back out of this and if you want to adjust your layout, you can adjust your layout. And these are your kind of global settings for the width of your layout, the overall layout, the content width and so on, and your padding, your margins, block spacing, and those types of things. So you do have a lot of control, lots more than we probably had before. And if you're coming from a page builder background, while this isn't necessarily the most intuitive interface to work with, it is a lot of kind of to and froing. You do still have a lot of those core functions that you need to be able to customize and design the way that you want to. It's not as easy to work with, but I think once you kind of get past that initial learning curve, it would be pretty quick to kind of get up and running. Just a lot of extra clicks that I don't think you really need to have inside you. So now that's the full site editing way of creating your header. We can do exactly the same thing. We can come back out of here. We can go back in this time and choose the footer option. And let's just say we don't want this footer. So we'll just select, we'll go into our list view, we'll choose our group and we'll delete that from here. And we'll come back in, click on the plus, go into our patterns, open up our footers, and we'll find a different type of footer. So we'll go for this kind of dark, simpler version, and that's now been added in. And like we say, you can easily come in and edit anything you want. So for example, I might not want to have this section inside here, the site title. I can remove that site title. So like we've just seen, we're going to say we're happy with this. We'll click on save and save one more time. That now is our footer saved out. Let's go ahead now and take a look at our page where we've made these changes. So this is what we started off with. We've got this sort of header section at the top. Let's refresh our page now, and you can see that's updated, including our new sort of teal button, our teal color scheme. So you can see any buttons, any subheadings, any kind of icon links, read more links, and so on, that are using that global color, including these backgrounds, they've all updated accordingly. We scroll to the bottom, there's our simple looking footer section. Okay, so that's the kind of global template parts for your headers and your footers and so on. Let's just delve into the template section itself. Now, if we take a look at this, we've got this page being created. And if you try to create a page inside WordPress using the Ollie theme and you set that as your kind of homepage, nothing will actually change. You'll still be presented with this template. And that's because if we come into the template section, we've got a front page template. If we select this and click on edit, you can see this is exactly what we see on our front page. So this is what we're seeing in the editor. Come back to the front page itself and you'll see there's our same page. So what we can do is we can easily come in here and we can go ahead, we can select everything inside this group area. You can see there's our header and our footer, our kind of global templates we've just edited and changed. And then inside the group, we've got our cover and all the different sections inside you. So if we click on cover, for example, you can see there's our cover section. We can, if we want to, go ahead, remove that cover. We can remove everything from here if we wanted to. Simply come in and choose to remove the blocks. And now what we've ended up with, if we click on save on here, come back over and refresh. And now what we have is our header section and our footer section. And this is how the template parts work. You can easily come into this template area inside full site editing, start making changes to that. Now we've got two kinds of ways we can work. You've got your home page, which is kind of a static page. And what we can do is we'll just put this back to what it was. We'll hit save. What we can also do is we can come out of this and we can come back from our front page, for example, and we can see we've got things like page, we've got index, we've got single and single wide featured image. So if we choose single, this is now our kind of single post template. This is the default template that will be used whenever you create a single post. So you can easily come in here and change any of the information that's being displayed. You can see we've got our post title. Again, choose our block, choose the post title, and we can update and change things. So if you want to come into advanced, you can add your own custom styles in. You can apply globally any styles that you create. You can come in and you can choose your options for your text, your background, your links, and so on. You can change the typography. Let's set that to monospace just so it looks terrible, but you kind of see where we're going. And we'll select the content that's underneath. You can see we now get different options. We've got the content width and we've got the wide width. So however you want to set this up, you've got your justification options. Again, you've got your advanced options inside you. You can also come into your typography settings. And again, we can go and enable all that really annoying stuff we've got to enable if we want to ever bloody use it. But you can then come in and you change things. So again, I set the content to monospace so it looks like someone's typed this on an old typewriter. And we'll hit save and we'll hit save again. So we've now changed and customized the single post template. So if we come back out of here, refresh our page so we've got our content back. Let's scroll through until we find a post we can take a look at. Let's open this one up. 
And you can see now that's picked up the monotype typography for our heading and also the same for our body text. So hopefully what this demonstrates is it's not that difficult to get started using full site editing, using full site editing or FSE themes like Ollie. And one of the reasons I kind of like Ollie when it comes to working with this is because it's got some really nice patterns that just help you speed up the design process of working with creating sites, whether there's the templates or posts and pages and things like that. So it's very simple to work with. It's very straightforward. At first, like I say, because the sort of the, the home page is kind of set and designed using full site editing, that may cause a little bit of confusion. And also the fact that a lot of things are hidden away inside the full site editing editor using Gutenberg, I also think is a little counterintuitive that we have to kind of go in and manually create uh, sort of like how we want this editor to work and it's still not being done in a global way. Now, again, like I say, if you know how to set this globally, please do let me know in the comment section down below. But that's my kind of first look at an overview of how you get started using full site editing, using the Ollie theme or any other kind of full site editing theme. As always though, let me have your comments and feedback on this. Has this kind of opened your eyes to how easy full site editing is? Would this convince you to at least give it a try? Let me know in the comment section below. And if you want to learn a lot more about working with these kind of full site editing themes, Gutenberg in general, or the kind of block editor, really do check out Jamie's channel over at Poodle Press. Jamie Marsden is doing some great work when it comes to working with and promoting how we should all start working with full site editing, Gutenberg and so on, all the kind of core functions. I'll put a link to his channel down in the description below so you can check that out. Subscribe, send him some love and just enjoy the amazing content he's creating. As always, my name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts and until next time, take care.